Hey everybody, welcome back. Fresh off of episode 40, in which we got into the oil fill slash crankcase breather assembly for 1113. This of course is the very, very early first gen unit. And I believe most people in the comment section came to an agreement as well as myself that this was a vastly superior design over the soon to be streamlined replacements that filled up more of this side of the engine. But the pendulum is swinging back the other way and it's swinging back hard today. We're gonna look at the oil filter next. And it's a beautiful monstrosity. That's about the best way I can describe it. We have some first gen early, early stuff on the bottom. And then we have some field installation, Caterpillar factory modifications, improvements. I don't know what you wanna call them up top. The thing's probably a foot and a half tall. It weighs about 20 pounds. It still barely filters any oil at all. And that's why I love it. All right, so I'm going to take this apart in this catch pan because even though I've been draining it, a lot of really nasty black stuff has still been running out. And this is basically two separate oil filters kind of working in tandem. You can see this top part is a little bit different of a finish than the bottom. It's definitely newer. This is a 6B463 field service add-on basically modification to this old original style bypass filter down here. So this top part actually has a replaceable filter element in it like a cartridge. This bottom part has two brass perforated strainers and at best it's a bypass system meaning it does not filter 100% of the oil that's being circulated. It just filters a certain percentage. And this is, I believe, yep, it's a perlator. So they built this filter so this bottom part is the first gen tech. This top part is the improvement. And they used this bottom portion filter on, I believe up to 5J 1802. So that means all of 1938 model year, used this bypass style and half of 1939 did as well until they finally started going to the more full flow systems. A full flow filter means that it filters all of the oil that's being pumped through it. So to begin the disassembly, process on this. We'll take this top bolt out of here. That's what holds this this field changeover uh, addition filter onto the top. There we are. We'll get into this later, seeing as how it's an add-on. So now we can remove the brass strainers from the can. It says perlator on the top, spacing 0 0.003. So basically anything three thousandths or smaller could potentially get through, but anything four thousandths or bigger had to stay on the outside. And these are actually two screens. This is the outer one. The inner one is in here. It does come out. There we go. That one. Another perlator also says spacing 0 0.003. And these were just washable elements. So they were not disposable. You can see a lot of work went into those things. Kind of neat, but when D2s first came out, this was 100% of your filtration capacity right here, just between these two things right here. So it's no wonder why they decided they need to needed to give it a little bit of extra capacity, huh? Next, I'll take the oil filter can off. You can see down in the bottom, there's that flat plate and it's held on with this long uh, hollow center bolt and there's a hex way down at the bottom of it down there. That's seven eighths. So I made a special socket for it. You guys last saw this when I was tamping the seals in the fuel pump. Check it out if you so choose. But it's just basically an old cheap half inch drive seven eighths socket that I welded a section of pipe on so that you can get all the way down to the bottom of that thing and get it loose. Took about 20 minutes to make that but it certainly makes this process a lot faster having it. Okay, there's the center bolt, a couple of oil feed holes in it. 
can should just come off of the base now. Sometimes they're stuck. There we are. We're already starting to see some of the grime. Okay, plate comes out of the bottom. A little bit dirty in there. That's the stuff I like to be able to clean out right there. Now there's a spring and a check ball beneath where that center bolt was. We're going to peel those out of there now so we don't drop or lose anything. There's the spring. And we'll use a magnet, see if we can peel that ball out of there. Yep. I believe this is a bypass for a clogged filter element, but don't absolutely quote me on that at this point. I don't have any literature on this early of a setup, uh, not even for the field changeover piece, just kind of some parts manual breakdown. So I, I don't know 100% of everything there is to know about this early style filter yet, so I'm gonna have to get it all apart and do a little bit of studying before I tell you uh, that what I say is gospel, right? Flipping it over now, two plugs on the bottom. There's nothing behind these. I believe this smaller plug was just for um, access to drill a vertical passage. And this larger plug just looks like it's a general drain. Pretty sure that's what the bigger one is all about. Oh man, lots of, lots of bad stuff on there. And then on the side, we have this cover with the three bolts and I don't know why that's here. Again, there's nothing behind that, and it doesn't appear that they needed any access for machining purposes. So about the only purpose it serves in this setup is to be another potential leak point. But we'll take it off anyway. We need to strip this down and thoroughly clean it all. There we are, some more sludge. Oh my gosh, yeah, look at that. Oh, it's just deep in there. All right, in the vise now, the last few pieces in this filter base are this cap, and then there's a spring below it, and a poppet valve below that. And it looks like this is a bypass for like a restricted oil cooler. If the flow became blocked out through the cooler, it would unseat that poppet, and then allow oil to come into the filter base and just bypass the cooler altogether. This cap is like a cup plug that's put uh, face down. They've got a hole in the middle of it. It's really, really tight. I've tried all kinds of different things to try and remove it. I don't want to damage anything, but I had this sleeve and this cap left over from doing the uh, valve guide removal on the cylinder head. Those look like they could be part of a suitable tool. And I tried modifying this bolt with this uh, notch in the bottom of it to go in and try and grab onto the edge of that plug, see if I could pull it out. It's way too tight. I can't get the kind of pulling force with that that I'm going to need. So I've been experimenting with the beer can engine filter base. It's the same thing. What I ended up doing was threading the center hole in that plug, and I was able to use the same sleeve and cap but just with a regular 5 16 bolt and a nut and washer to act as a puller to pull that cap out of there. I'd rather not have to thread that, but it's really important to get that out. These are like little restrictor areas. They basically act as debris traps, and I want to get that out of there so I can get that really good and clean. So 5 16 by 18 tap. We're not gonna get fancy with this. I just need to make sure it starts in square. I don't have a lot of material to work with, so as soon as I feel this starting to cut threads, I need to be really careful with it. Work that chip just right. So I'm not trying to uh, make this act as a drill bit and just remove material that I can't spare. I just needed to cut some threads. stopping often to uh, 
take a look at it, make sure it looks like it's going in square. Feels like we're cutting some decent threads in there now. Back the chip out, advance it, back the chip out. I think that's about all it took to get through. Yep. Run it down to full depth. Get good threads. Test fit the bolt. Should do well. So Sleeve and top plate. The washer on there. Start the bolt into the threads. Get good engagement. Run the nut down. And now we pull and hope that this plug holds up as well as the beer can engine's plugged it. Hopefully we get the plug to come out before we pull the threads. I think it's working. Okay. Yep, there's the plug. Looks like it fared pretty well. And there's our spring and pop it. And you can see lots of junk in there. That's why we go to all the work of taking all this stuff apart. All right, so with the filter base completely disassembled, everything from here over is what originally was 100% of the filtration capacity of these early D3400s. Quick view. In the parts manual here, you can see at one time there was just a cap on top of the oil filter can. So basically those brass strainers were everything that was going to be cleaning the oil that was being circulated throughout the engine. But now we get into this top piece. Quick shot of it. In the parts manual, if you're so inclined, 6B463 oil filter group for field installation for tractors 5J1 through 5J1496. And you notice this tube that comes off the top of that. That is the tube that we did not put back onto the oil fill slash breather in the last episode. A little link will be popping up right here if you want to go back and refresh your memory on that. So this top add-on piece is pretty simple in its construction really. There is a replaceable paper element up in the top here. It has this base piece, which is just an adapter plate, it has a rubber seal on the bottom and another rubber seal at the base of this can. It took the place of the old cap that was taken off of the original can and discarded so that this could then just seal on top of it. And you have a little soldered peg here and a soldered peg 180 from that. That's because there are a couple of fingers in here that hook up and around those pegs on the inside and there's spring tension bearing against this bottom piece. It's not connected to this top bolt. This top bolt, sh bolt should have a keeper on it, keeping it retained in the housing. So we'll just do a counterclockwise twist. There we go. Like I said, big spring. Oh man, look at that. That, uh, oh, and the smell. Whoo, that's, uh, that's vintage uh, stale crankcase oil mixed with a, a healthy dose of condensation for sure. I'm not even sure I can really describe that smell, but anybody who's ever been into an old machine like this is going to know exactly what it is. Ooh, there's, uh, there's junk in there. Wow. Some rust. Fingers don't look horrible. And the replaceable paper element should be in here. Looks like we have a metal base piece. Yep, that goes on top of that spring. Yeah, it deteriorated for sure. Let's see what we got. Wow, the moisture definitely got to that one. Oh, I see it's hung on the peg in there. Oh, it is a caterpillar. Part number 8B5935. At least they use the authentic uh, Cat Factory filters, huh? Boy, look at how... Oh, that thing's just 
just falling apart. Oh, that's bad. Okay, hopefully you can see a little, little circlip down in there, which is going to capture this center bolt in the housing. See if I can get that peeled out of there. There's the little clip. Okay, center bolt comes out. A little bit of a uh, tapered point uh, collar that went on there too. Copper sealing gasket under the head of the bolt. And that looks like it's about it. So lots of cleanup to do here. So that does it for the disassembly. Um, this is kind of an interesting hybridization mix between the old way of doing things with just the cleanable elements versus the new way of doing things with uh, much more effective replaceable uh, media filters. Um, honestly, I really don't know how the oil flows through this thing. I'm gonna have to do a lot of cleaning here and get these pieces so you can actually pick them up, touch them, turn them over, and you don't get disgusting in the process. And that actually helps you visualize how everything's gonna flow and everything's gonna work anyway. So lots of cleanup left to do right here. I'm gonna get busy on that. We're gonna cut the video right here. And once I figure this thing out a little bit more and am able to sound a little bit more educated on exactly what I've got here, We'll pick back up and talk about oil flow and then put it back together, reseal and reinstall. Definitely interesting for sure though. So thanks for watching everybody. Please tune in again.